Good evening. Talking to you this evening about our topic for the night, which is feasting on prayer, fasting on resentment. Interesting topic, and when I first heard it, it was how those two fit together. And yet if we look at the reality of this week, Holy Week, it's clear that they definitely do. And in fact, the power of prayer to drown us from resentment is such a wonderful reality. Throughout this week, we see Jesus praying. Jesus praying that we love one another at the Last Supper. Jesus praying for his disciples and for the church that they be able to succeed. Jesus in the priestly prayer in John's Gospel powerfully talks about his legacy that he's entrusting to his disciples. And he does that after he's already said, one of you is bound to betray me, and not only is one going to betray me, but one's going to deny me, and the rest are going to abandon me. Except, of course, John. When he prays, He's praying for their best, for the best for them, for the best for the church, for the best for all of those who will come after him. And when he does so, it's from that hope that they clearly will be able to move beyond, move beyond, and he will move beyond what will happen. In the agony of the garden, Jesus asks that, the Lord take this burden away from him. He didn't want to die. And yet in his prayer, the first thing he discerns is God's will. But also, as soon as he's done praying, what happens? He's able to greet Judas. And as he greets Judas, it's a totally different person. At first he was saying, it would be better for him if he'd not been born. Now he's saying, friend, do what you have to do. He talks about Judas as his friend. Not as his enemy. Not with resentment and hatred and animosity. Or in a different sense. He prays and hopes that the disciples will be free. That let them go. They have nothing to do with this. Let them be free. He knows that they will run away. After a moment of bravado when they try to chop off someone's ear, and he heals the ear, he is not an enemy who is healed because of Jesus' love and care and compassion. It comes from that prayer. And when Jesus is hanging on the cross, the seven last words that he speaks about are words of hope, words of reconciliation. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. Even it is finished. Meaning that I trust into your hands. I commend my spirit. Each one of the prayers that Jesus makes to the Father and to those who are next to him are prayers of hope, of promise, of reconciliation. Jesus recognizes that he's about to die for their sins and for ours. And when he does so, it's not because he's angry at us, not because he's even angry at our sins, but because he loves us so much that he's not going to hold back. That there is not going to be any resentment. There's not going to be any limitations. And when Jesus, after his resurrection, sees Peter, the first time he sees Peter and the other apostles was in the upper room, and he just simply says, come and see, I am alive. 
to Thomas. He doesn't challenge Thomas. He doesn't reject Thomas when he doesn't believe. He understands. He understands how unsure Thomas might be and how willing Thomas will then respond. Instead of resentment, instead of challenge, there's an invitation. Come, touch, my hands, my side. Thomas doesn't have to do that. Thomas knows who he's dealing with, and so the response is, my Lord and my God. Prayer that many of us say after the words of institution, every Eucharist, as the body, the blood of Christ have presented to us, and we simply recognize that he is Jesus who saved us, and who will feed us. Whenever we hit situations where we're angry, or hurt, or disturbed, or bothered, or victims, then we recognize the power of this day, the power of Good Friday, to change that around. Jesus shows us that none of those are soul destroying, and in fact, each one of those, instead, is an invitation. An invitation to touch the Paschal Mystery. An invitation to become one with Jesus. An invitation to grow beyond ourselves. And by coming close, by our personal prayer to God these days, we see we see how great is the good. We see how wonderful is the Lord caring for us. And so there is no limit. Again, every time we pray the Our Father, we're led beyond the hurts. When we say, give us our trespasses. So we know we have trespassed, but we have hurt God and others. We ask forgiveness. We also need that commitment to help us, to lead us, to treat us as we treat others. And so we know that we better treat others better than we would sometimes want to do. And so with all of that, we're very simply and easily invited, invited to come close to the Lord. Prayer has that wonderful power the power to lead us beyond ourselves. You know, so many times when, when people talk about the brokenness in their lives, it's the personal brokenness. You know, it's what they did wrong. It's the way in which they have not acted according to the commandments or according to their moral understanding. And so oftentimes it's individual acts, individual activities. Personal ideas. And a lot of times when we pray, we we ask that the Lord forgive what we've done, we also ask Him to forgive what we've failed to do. And we say that we we need to recognize that sometimes we've seriously failed to do a lot of things for our neighbor who we call to life, for our God who so generously bestows his goodness upon us. We need to be people who can simply say to God and to others, I love you, I you, I forgive the hurts that have happened in my life, even though they were totally unjustified. Remember Jesus. I forgive the resentments. I forgive the unfairness, the injustice. I forgive the oppression. I forgive the misunderstandings. Because I don't need those. When we want to get rid of resentment, we can do one of two ways. One is we can try to get even. And that doesn't work, does it? When we try to get even. Oftentimes we can't. 
or we can get ourselves totally upset so that we're resenting something or someone or circumstances that we have a little control over and our resentment turns into anger and our anger turns into high blood pressure and the ability, inability to go to sleep or to be happy in our lives and all of that just makes us worse. Instead of resenting, we need to love our enemies, forgive those who have hurt us. And as we do so, we love ourselves. We forgive ourselves. We let go of all those things that restrict us from being the best people we can be. And so when we feel those ways, we simply and turn to the Lord and say, Father, help me. Help me, Lord, to let go. Help me, Lord, to forgive. Help me, Lord, to act like you did. In the parables, in the wonders of these days, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, help me, Lord, to trust in the power of those events to change my life. Help me, Lord, to live eternal life. Not on the day I die, but today, every day. Help me, Lord, to be an Easter person who looks beyond myself, looks beyond the immediate future, and is a person of hope. You know, in these days of fear and death and problems and isolation from COVID-19, we need to be able to say, this will not destroy me. This will not ruin my life. This will not make me less than I can be. And it means two things. One is that I take care of myself. I take care of others. If all I'm interested in saving my own life, well, you have with it. But if we're not supporting and caring and loving one another, if we're not doing our best to make sure that I'm not spreading disease around, that I'm not the cause of someone else's death, that I'm not making people unhealthy, or I'm not making people less than they can be, by not speaking the truth and not living the truth and not praying the truth, then we're all in trouble. These days, not days to hate where the disease might have come from, might not be understood totally anyway, but that doesn't matter. What we need to do instead is to pray. To pray for all the victims. To pray that these kinds of pandemics will not return to this earth because we find vaccines, we find medications, we find a populace that is willing to do their very best for one another. And all of these things we become our better selves. It just it doesn't happen. We need to do two things to make that happen. One is to go outside of ourselves, and that's to pray. To pray for ourselves, to pray for one another, to pray for conversion, to pray for an end to the pandemic, to pray for cures, but also when we pray to recognize it's not about me. I'm not praying for my own safety alone. It's good to pray for yourself. But I'm praying for all of us. I'm praying for, praying for the courage to do what I have to do. There's so many times where you want to go out, you want to celebrate. Easter is it's just about here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could feel and pack our churches with all kinds of people, rather than doing simultaneous. But all of that's 
able to be endured when we pray. Pray this Easter. Pray during these weeks and months ahead. And please, don't be a hurricane, pandemic kind of prayer who gets on their knees a lot during the moment's crisis and then says, oh well, thanks God, see you later, next crisis, I'll be back to you. Because otherwise, we return to our old self. Do your best. Love you all. Very happy, good friend. And most especially,